And this is our ladder truck. Uh, it's E1. It's a 100 foot uh, ladder, as the name implies. Um, we use this truck. It carries a lot of ground ladders for us um, for, for exterior uh, firefighting operations, whether that is window rescues or uh, doing uh, vertical ventilation. This truck goes out five, six times a day. Uh, this truck's different because it has no water on it. So with our engines, uh, they have a pump and have it carry a tank of water. This does not have any of that. This is just strictly a ladder truck. Um, so for this truck, you're just, that's your search crew and that's your uh, exterior operations also. So this is where a lot of our uh, different la ground ladders are. So we need to use these to get into windows or onto roofs of uh, smaller residential buildings. Um, we'll go over here. So we also, right here we have our auto extrication stuff. Uh, so this would be like our cutters and spreaders. Uh, or some, some people know jaws of life. So anytime that someone is trapped in a vehicle, we use these tools to get them out. Um, our rescue truck also has tools like that. Um, they have a little bit bigger tools, but we're able to use these just as well. Um, we also have water rescue stuff here. Um, so uh, we go on all water rescues in the township and mutual aid. Um, we, so that's water rescue rope and the life jackets and stuff. So we have li more life jackets. Life jackets, helmets, throw bags uh, for anyone that might be in, uh, in trouble. We got some hand tools here. So you can see uh, very large bolt cutters. On this side, we have some axes on this side. We're able to get around. Yep, just, just some, some different axes if need be. And then some sledgehammers and a halligan, which is more for like forcible entry. Uh, but here we have like water or uh, water can, we call it. So just fire extinguisher. Uh, different types of fire extinguishers for different fires. Uh, we also have more rope, more rope rescue equipment. All right, so here's where uh, the interior firefighter would sit and the exterior, the back steps, as we call it. As you can see, they have the air packs in there, flashlights, uh, anything that they would need. And also there is EMS equipment back there as well, because uh, this, this can respond um, on any ALS run. So right here, we just have uh, some more uh, miscellaneous tools. Uh, we have a generator, so if we need uh, any exterior lighting, we could take this around the back of the house and we could easily have lighting back there. Um, we have, call this our high-rise kit. Um, we don't have too many high-rises here, uh, just a few, but if need be, we can uh, use this to go up and uh, deploy hose on a different level of a structure if need be. Our decon bucket, so like after a fire, we have to get cleaned off. A tr metal trash can uh, for fireplace fires. Just getting ashes out of that. Here is our tool, our toolbox. Uh, we go on a lot of uh, emergency to property runs. Um, people locked out of their house. Uh, so these are full of just tools what we might need to help get us into that house. Uh, we usually try and do the least path of least resistance. So we try and create the least amount of damage. Um, if need be, but unfortunately, sometimes we do have to create a little bit of damage. But uh, that's just a bunch of hand tools. Uh, here are the saws. Uh, so these are what we call K-saws, or rotary saws. Um, these would be used for like cutting metals, garage doors. Um, we do have a chainsaw up on top uh, by the ladder. But here we just have tarps. Um, for any time we do have a fire, we try and conserve property. And try and call it, like try and protect as much as we can in the house. Um, unfortunately, we're not always able to do that. But if we have the opportunity, we can put these tarps over some belongings, couches, and stuff like that to help protect. A lot of chimney fire stuff. Uh, we do get calls to the chimney fires. Uh, we do have a sump pump here. This is another tip for the nozzle. So on the end of our ladder, you might see that there's a nozzle on the bottom. Of this. So this is pre-piped, as they call it. So there's already a pipe. Before we used to have to run hose up the ladder. Um, so this is already pre-piped, so there's already a uh, hose going up to it on the bottom there, and there's a nozzle, and this is just an extra nozzle for up there. So if, yeah, usually we use that for defensive fire operations, so if it's a big fire, um, we can get, hook that up, hook, this, hook an engine up to this truck and get a lot of water out of the tip of that. A few years ago, we got an ISO 1 rating, um, which is a third-party company comes out and rates departments, and of course, number one is uh, top tier department 
and we were fortunate enough that we met all, all the criteria uh, to meet, get an ISO 1. So we took a lot of pride in getting an ISO 1. So we put that on all of our trucks. Um, yeah, so yeah, so we put stickers on everything. So. <laughs> And then back here is a uh, giant fan. So it's an electric fan. Um, if there's a lot of smoke and gases inside after we put the fire out, we'll turn this on, try and get all that out or uh, gets a lot, used a lot on cooking fires. So people uh, smoke up their house a lot when, with cooking. Uh, I, I've done that myself. Um, we'll put this at the front door and it'll get all that smoke out for us easily. And then just some fuel cans. That's pretty much it for the ladder truck. <laughs> This is Engine 25. Uh, this is the busiest engine company within Colerain. Our primary role with this apparatus that we have here is uh, responding to EMS runs. So we'll go with the medic unit if it's more of a, an acute run or an ALS based one. And then obviously we respond to structure fires and uh, any other type of fire detail that would be needed on. So obviously the primary difference between this and our ladder truck, the ladder truck does not have any water. This is gonna be our primary uh, water related apparatus that we have. So going to a structure fire, for example. This is where the hose lines are and then basically the water supply to be able to uh, suppress the fire at that point. We want to uh, project that image that we're here to help, uh, whether it's on a, a run per se or if it's just in general being able to help somebody with if the car broke down or just an overall feeling of safety and uh, them knowing that we're just ready to give back to our community. So. so on the front bumper, we do have one section of hose. That's gonna be uh, a smaller length of hose. It's 100 foot at inch and three quarters. So this is our primary car fire line. So any car fires that we have, this is gonna be the line that we're gonna deploy on that. Um, kind of moving back, this is the side that our officer sits on. Uh, they're the ones who do all the radio traffic and then ultimately make uh, most of the decisions on every single run that we have. We have almost uh, all the capabilities that a medic unit does within a limited measure so we have oxygen we have stuff to run um, any type of cardiac arrest or anything like that so uh, we could respond and our medic units could be out so we would have to wait for another medic unit to come responding so we're still able to run a majority of calls that we're able to without that um, this is the officer side panel i guess you could say so it has discharges or intakes. So basically what that means is anything that's a discharge is water going out from the truck. Anything that's an intake is bringing water into the truck. Uh, so the first compartment that we have here is primarily our hand tools. Uh, so anything that we need going into uh, a fire or any type of incident, this is gonna be our majority of our hand tools that we're gonna use. Um, and then our rat pack, which is a pretty important, important piece of equipment for us. So whenever we have uh, a structure fire, one of our companies is going to bring this up and that's if we have a firefighter go down within a structure. It has a, uh, a larger size bottle of air so that if they're running out of air we can connect to their bottle and supply them with air along with uh, other tools that we may need to get them out of the structure. Cool. Here is going to be our extinguisher uh, compartment. Uh, so we have three different types of extinguishers uh, depending on what kind of scenario it is. Here is more of our technical rescue, I guess you could say for the engine. So like I said, we were water rescue equipped and ice rescue. Uh, so within these red bags, those are our water suits and our ice suits. Uh, so on the way to a run, we'll have one of our technicians put on the suit to basically be ready to go. On the back compartment, we have uh, chainsaw cones and then a porter power. Uh, which is something that we could use for car fires and extrications. So that's the biggest, bigger difference between us and the ladder truck that we have. Um, they have the full size extrication equipment. This is kind of like a handheld version of it that we actually have to pump. So kind of going down the driver's side now, uh, this is kind of like a various compartment that we have. Uh, the blue buckets are a dry absorb. So whenever we have an auto accident with liquid spilling out, uh, we put that down and it basically soaks up everything so that way it doesn't go down in the drain or cause any further accidents with it being slick. Orange bucket up top is decon. So after a structure fire, we have everybody come out and we have a whole decon process that we do to get a majority of the 
debris and uh, carcinogens and whatnot off of us. We still come back and wash our gear after every structure fire, so. This is the FAO or the, the driver's compartment. So basically this has uh, various types of connections and stuff that we would be able to use if we need to connect two lines or if we're going into another district where they have different type of threads. So there's three different type of threads that people will use. We have Cincinnati, National Standard, and Fairfield. So everybody kind of operates differently. We try to get everybody on a national standard so that way it's the same across the board, but we're always not lucky enough that it happens. So we have everything just in case we run into that case. Uh, the back here is where um, what we call our back steps. So those are the people who are actually deploying the lines, uh, hitting the hydrants. Um, the uh, majority of the time we run with three um, and it just kind of depends on the staffing. Today we're lucky and we actually have four, uh, which is always very nice just because the more manpower that we have on the fires, the better. Um, we always say that there's safety in numbers. So the more people we could actually get on a fire, the, the better it is for us and the safer it is for, for everybody on scene. So uh, they're equipped with their SCBAs uh, and the red bag is their mask. And then obviously you can see all the gear that we have here. Um, so we like to be at a, out the door on any type of run within two minutes. Uh, that's kind of our main goal. So if a uh, run comes in overnight, we try to get down to the bay dressed in our bunker gear and out the door within two minutes is kind of like our golden standard. We try to try to be quicker than that, obviously, especially with structure fires. We're usually pretty good about getting out the door pretty quick. So um, the other side, like I was talking, was the officer. So they have the computer that basically has all the information about the run that we're going to. And then they can pull up the maps on there and kind of give an idea of where the incident's happening. And it also has hydrants on it. Uh, so it'll be pretty nice for us whenever we have that to be like, you know, there's a hydrant across the street. So it gives us a little bit more information and it's easier for us once we get on scene. Uh, this is the, the FAO or the driver's seat. So they're the main ones who obviously get it to the scene and then they're gonna be the ones actually putting uh, the pump into operation and getting the ho uh, hose lines charged. All right.